Hi everybody, welcome to Flintlock Operator and welcome to my outdoor workshop. Today what we're going to be doing is working on a project. This is going to be the first project that we've done on the channel and what we're going to be doing is taking this cheap cold steel trail hawk head and turning it into a spike hawk. A spike hawk meant for combat and fighting and maximum damage instead of what it is right now which is really a lightweight woods working axe. A couple things to note before we get started. These cold steel tomahawk heads are actually fairly decent quality. They're drop forced and they're not cast, so they're going to be more durable and more impact resistant. They're also made out of 1055, which means we can heat treat this. So that's going to be really good. I've had this one for probably going on about 13 years right now, and this isn't really an accurate representation of what would have been carried around on the frontier. But I've done some modifications, as you can see, I've put all these file marks in there and it's been well used and well loved. But it's not, ex and it's not an exact representation of what would have been found along the frontier. This is a better representation. So what we have here is this same tomahawk head, and the only thing I've done, two things. I've obviously put a fixed handle on it, but to achieve that, what you have to do is you have to flatten out the eye. That way it can receive the haft a lot more readily. And we're going to go a little bit beyond just these basic modifications. Now, tomahawks back during the 18th century were more weapons than they were tools. They were very lightweight and they were a little bit smaller than this. And we're just going to have to work with what we got here. Uh, the hand forged tomahawks can range between $250 to $400 on up for just the basic ones. And I'm not saying you shouldn't get those, especially the ones made by Simeon England. Uh, I haven't had a chance to handle his, but from all I hear, Simeon England makes fantastic tomahawks and, and other 18th century weaponry. Now, I don't have access to a lot of tools, so I'm kind of having to scrape and scrimp and just pull together what I, what I already have. So you don't have to have a huge workshop. You don't have to have a huge forge setup. As you'll see, my forge is literally a bunch of dirt in a wheelbarrow, and my anvil is just a big hunk of steel. So what we're going to see is you don't have to have a lot of access to tools or a giant workshop. We're not even really going to use power tools on this. So to sum up the process before we get started, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing out this pole into a spike. We're going to be flattening out the eye so it can receive a permanent handle. We're going to be filling in this set screw hole. We're also going to be removing material from the belly here, as well as from the blade and a little bit around the eye, probably not touch that too much. Uh, we'll do some heat training to it, do some file work, and of course we're going to put a new handle on this tomahawk. So let's get started guys, this is going to be a really fun project. Well you guys can laugh if you want, but I'm fairly certain this little forge setup is going to work. Sorry it's super tacky, I, I don't have access to a really nice forge right now, but this is just to show you, you don't have to have super fancy uh, workshop or tools to get this job done. Forges have been made out of dirt and clay for thousands and thousands of years, so I don't think I'm going to have a problem with this. One time I even made a forge in an old stainless steel sink and the refractory was made from sand and drywall plaster. So if that worked, I'm pretty sure this is going to work too. So, all right, what do we have here? We have our coals. We're just using charcoal today. I don't have coal. We've got our coals cooking here. So let's take this and dump it in there and we've got a nice bit of coals already going. I'm going to take some of our new coals and put it on top of there. And this is going to be real nice. I think this is going to work quite well. All right, let's get this thing going. Hope my wife doesn't miss this hair dryer. Now charcoal can get super sparky, so we don't want to have our air source here be too high. So we're just going to keep it on low for right now. Oh, and one more thing before we stick the tomahawk head in here. For the safety minded and moms out there, I do have a five gallon bucket of water ready on standby behind the camera to douse this if it gets too big. Looks good. Keep in mind, I'm not a blacksmith. So if anybody who actually knows what they're doing is watching me and screaming at the camera right now, I'm sorry.
don't want to make the spike overly curved, but man, I keep messing up that edge. I do want it to be where I can hook things. What do you guys think? That looks pretty good. That looks pretty cool. It turned out better than I thought it would. All right, the first step in our forging process is done. We've got the spike all drawn out. That uh, took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but it turned out better than I thought it would. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to flatten out this eye. So that's step number two in the forging process. So we're gonna throw this puppy back in the fire. The fire's died down a little bit, but that's okay. That's totally fine. Stick this guy in there. Try and get it in the hottest part of the fire. A couple more in there. And let's go. Mm, I messed that up. Oh, I was able to do both sides. That's cool. Awesome. Well, I messed that up a little bit, whacked that a little too hard. Let's uh, see if we can correct that. That's a little bit squished. Well, regardless of looks, I think that's going to work. Part of it is I whacked it on the top, apparently, a couple times. Well, now, as you can see, we're really starting to get somewhere with this tomahawk. We're at the step now where we're going to have to fill in that set screw hole. You could probably just weld this shut, just put a spot weld over it and grind or file over that spot weld. But what I'd like to do is put a rivet in there, and I'm really hoping that I can get that rivet hot enough to whenever it engages in the threads that are in that hole, that it will just stay there. Well, what I'm planning on doing is inserting basically some, some uh, steel wedges in there and putting the rivet in there, heating this side up really hot, and then just pounding that rivet into that hole. So let's give it a shot. I apologize for the lack of audio during this section. I was having microphone problems and I didn't realize it till it was too late. As you can see, I have the rivet in the hole which I made off camera and it's backed by a few pieces of steel. Now this was by no means a perfect way of doing it and I wish I had spent a little bit more time on this part. Now that the forging process is complete, it's time to start shaping the head to its final shape. For this, we're going to use primarily files. I have a couple of Nicholson files as well as a really big horse hoof file, which doesn't work very well on hard metal, but it, it does work well on soft steel. I will also be cheating and using a belt sander, though the belt sander is made for wood and not steel. Alright, there's a couple parts on here that's a little bit hard to reach uh, with, the, with the flat files, and I don't have a proper round file. I was wanting to do this whole project with only hand tools, but uh, I've got it, so I'm going to use it. Well, we lost audio again. Sorry about that. What I'm doing here is adding some decorative grooves to the base of the spike. Serves no practical purpose, but it helps to balance out the piece a little bit. I'm starting to refile the edge back into the tomahawk head here. I find with using a high quality file like this Nicholson coarse file, it really helps me to be able to control the angle of the edge a lot better than it would on the belt sander. Now that I've filed a new edge onto the tomahawk, it's time to move over to the other side and work on sharpening the spike. I saved this step for last to avoid impaling myself on the spike as I shape the head. The next step in the process will be to anneal the tomahawk head. Annealing it will release some of the stresses and strains in the grain structure that were incurred during the forging process. 
and will help prepare the head for the final heat treating. To anneal the steel, we have to heat the whole head up to be red hot and let it cool off nice and slow. harder to see in this bright light but it's gotten an orangey red so now we're just gonna let it cool off on the clinker pile for a while and now for the moment you've all been waiting for the quench what we're gonna do is heat this up until it is no longer magnetic and then we're gonna dunk it dunk the edge into this used motor oil let's go That's always so satisfying. Now our file should just skate off it. It's getting a little bite, but not much. Pretty good. All right, let's see if we can get to the spike real quick. one heat treated tomahawk head. All right, the tomahawk has now been annealed. The tip of the spike and the cutting edge have been uh, heated and quenched. Now it's time to clean this up before we put it in the oven. Ha, forget hand sanding for three hours. We're throwing the tomahawk head in the oven for about four hours at 450 degrees. This will temper the steel and make it far less brittle from the quenching. Four hours later. Ooh, it's hot in there. Let's check this out. I think that looks good. Let's let it cool off now. Now that we finished tempering, the heat treating on this tomahawk is completed. And before we mount it on its new haft, the last thing we're going to do is clean it up, uh, give it one more sanding, make everything nice and smooth, make it all bare steel again, and then we'll mount it. And since we're going to be putting a bluing on this, we don't have to worry about getting every little scratch out and It'll all even out in the end. Now to put the finishing touches on this, I'm going to use this Richwood Casey cleaner degreaser and, oops, too much, bluing agent. Take this inside real quick, wash it off with water. Dry this off real good. Now we'll apply the bluing. Again, we're not we're not trying to get a perfect finish on here. We just want it to be darker steel. Well, there you have it. I think that turned out rather nice. What do you think? Looks pretty cool. All right, that's done with the head. Now what we have to do is mount it. Now that we have the tomahawk head finished, it's time to mount it. And what we're gonna use is this hickory sledgehammer handle. You can obviously make a handle out of just a piece of wood, preferably hardwood, um, oak, ash, hickory, hard maple, those all work very well. Uh, I prefer hickory, and these tool handles work really well because they're already basically in the, in the right shape and form. So all you have to really do is just fine tune the shape that will allow the tomahawk head to be able to slip down on there and for you to be able to mount it. We 
we've got maybe about an eighth of an inch left before we come up over the top of the tomahawk, but we're going to need to keep going down probably about half a more inch at the very least. So I'm using a combination of knives, brass, and my carving knives, and just carve this down. It's not that difficult. We want to leave as, as much material as possible though, because we want as much material as possible when we put that wedge in to expand and fill the eye of the, of the tomahawk head. Got this dark walnut wood die. It's not stained. It's a little bit stronger than wood stain. I stained my the stock of my brown best with it. So let's see how it does on this hardwood. Probably won't get super dark, but I'll be able to get a little bit more color. Now to set the head, tap it like that a couple more times. Make sure it's nice and straight. Yeah. That looks awesome. All right, let's set it in place. So funny story, I was so eager to put the wedge in, I forgot to film it. Oops. Anyways, uh, I've got the wedge in. I had to cut it down just a little bit to make it fit into the head properly since the head is a lot shorter than what this uh, what this wedge was intended for. So all we have left is just to cut the top off and give it one more wipe down, sharpen it, and we'll be done. One more coat of linseed oil. And she's finished, except for sharpening. As you can see here, the tomahawk is now razor sharp. We're just gonna touch up the back edge of the spike a little bit, just to make sure it's as spiky and pointy as possible. And with that, it's time to put this new Spike Tomahawk to the test. Everyone, thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me as we took this cold steel tomahawk and turned it into a weapon from a more civilized age. Let's go ahead and get down in the comment section and let me know what gear you have made or gear you have modified. I'd love to hear from y'all. 
Everyone be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the other videos that are on this channel. We have a lot of fun, exciting, and informative videos already on the channel, and we have a lot of action-packed videos coming to you very, very soon in the next few months. Everyone, thank you so much for watching, and have a fantastic day.